It has been six months since Russia invaded Ukraine, and there appears to be no end in sight because Vladimir Putin is now beefing up the Russian military while President Biden announces a $3 billion military aid package to help Ukraine. Joining us this morning with more insight is a historian of Russia and author, Dr. Carl Ackerman. Good morning, Dr. Ackerman. How are you doing this morning? Good morning, or as you say in Russian, Dobre uh, Utra. Okay, I'll let you say it. Now, Hawaii <laughs> residents are wondering when is this war going to end because they want gas prices to come down and they want the stock market and their 401k to go back up. Do you see this war ending by the end of the year? You know, I, I don't. Um, I see it as a fairly prolonged conf conflict. That, now, whether that means a couple of years or, you know, five years, um, I don't think that the Russians can um, continually do this without draining their economy. So that's the good news. Um, but the Ukrainians, I think, will have to defeat them to, um, to end this war, and that's going to take a while. Now, this morning, Russian President Vladimir Putin said that he's beefing up his military with 137,000 more soldiers. Can Ukraine hold them off? And if so, how much more help will they get from the U.S.? Well, yes, and you know the three billion dollars that was recently granted by our Congress and by our president um, means that we're in for the long run. And what's particularly important about this last package is the drones, because you know if you don't have an air force, you need to know where where the Russians are operating from, and um, you know the the Russians can throw more men into the battle, but I, I think that it's going to be a slow drudge for them. And the longer this war takes, um, the less likely um, that Vladimir Putin is going to be successful. Now, we are now six months into this war. Ukraine just celebrated their Independence Day this week. How do you see this war playing out and for how long? Because again, it's affecting our local residents with gas prices and their 401k as well as inflation. Well, you know, the first thing is, you know, the, uh, the gas prices in Hawaii are coming down less than other places. So that's one thing. But um, having said that, I think that, you know, um, this war is going to be prolonged. Um, I, I think that there's not going to be a, um, a turning point in the near future. What I'm worried about is, of course, um, um, the nuclear reactor at Zaporizhia. Um, this is the most dangerous thing for the world community is that there's going to, you know, if there's an accident, if they can't get electricity to get their cooling system going, which of course was the problem in Japan recently and uh, well, not so recently, you know, uh, 10 years ago or so, and um, also the problem in Chernobyl. So the big thing that we have to worry about is not so much the inflationary um, aspects of this, which are, you know, from all intents and everything I've seen in the economic out, um, front. Uh, coming down, uh, but the real problem is um, this nuclear power plant. And if electricity stops, or there's a direct attack on the plant, or you know something happens to the Russian trucks that are in the plant, so that they won't be attacked by the Ukrainians, um, you know, and the Ukrainians are not doing anything to do this. Uh, it's always the Russians. So, unfortunately, to answer your question very succinctly. Um, uh, there's not going to be anything in the immediate future that helps our, our 401ks or uh, gas inflationary prices, although they seem to be coming down because the supply is getting greater. All right, there you have it, Dr. Carl Ackerman. Thank you so much for your insight this morning and have a great day. Thank you very much.